What up and welcome to Rama Screen YouTube channel and here's my review of Prime Video's new animated series Batman Cape Crusader. Let's rock this. You know what's crazy is and you can correct me if I'm wrong but as I understand it we as in all of us audiences we almost didn't get the chance to ultimately watch this show because this was one of those already finished projects that David Zasloff of WBD wanted to indefinitely shelf. Just like how they got rid of Batgirl and Coyote vs. Acne, among others. But I heard they ended up shopping Batman Cape Crusader around and luckily it got picked up by Prime Video. And so this one has a bit of good fortune on its side. <laughs> Which is why I got to screen the entire 10 episodes. Thank you, Prime Video. And I'm here to tell you that Batman Cape Crusader, hands down, is one of the best television shows ever made and that is not an understatement batman cape crusader floors me it's gritty atmospheric and haunting the psychological dive is phenomenal the old-timey noir animation style is reminiscent of batman the animated series hamish linklater as the voice of bruce wayne slash batman is terrific the rest of the cast are equally outstanding and the rogues gallery explorations are thought-provoking. Now, some would call this a spiritual sequel to Batman animated series, and that would be a fair description since, especially since the legendary Bruce Tim is the same guy who also brought you this new version. But here's the thing. Batman Cape Crusader also brings a lot of things that are fresh and new to the table. And so it's a healthy mix of nostalgia and a subversion of the elements that you've come to love about Gotham's lore. And some would call that race swapping or woke, but I call it bold and refreshing and most importantly, impactful welcome to Gotham City, where the corrupt outnumber the good. Criminals run rampant and law-abiding citizens live in a constant state of fear. Forged in the fire of tragedy, Wealthy socialite Bruce Wayne becomes something both more and less than human, the Batman. His one-man crusade attracts unexpected allies within the GCPD and the City Hall. But his heroic actions spawn deadly, unforeseen ramifications. The series is a reimagining of the Batman mythology through the visionary lens of executive producers J.J. Abrams, Matt Reeves, and Bruce Timm. Based on DC characters, Voice starring Hamish Linklater, Jamie Chung, Diedrich Bader, Christina Ricci, Minnie Driver, McKenna Grace, John DiMaggio, Paul Shear, Tom Kenny, Gary Anthony Williams, David Crumholtz, Haley Joel Osment, and Toby Stevens. As I've said, there are 10 episodes and a lot of them are procedurals, meaning here's a bad guy on one episode and here's another bad guy on another episode, you know, villain of the day sort of a thing. And the overarching arc that leads to the climactic last couple of episodes is Harvey Dent's journey of becoming or eventually becoming Two-Face. And of course, the duality of our protagonist, Bruce Wayne and his alter ego, Batman. And what I love about this new approach is that there are some views that Bruce holds that don't sit well with me. And that's a good thing because it takes nuance and complicated character to a whole new level. Tone-wise and animation-wise, as I implied earlier, it looks and feels just like Batman the Animated Series, but even more brooding than I remember it. What writer Ed Brubaker and showrunner Bruce Timm masterfully did here is give you the stories that you're familiar with and give it a slight makeover. While still grounding the crime drama and still making it be character-driven. But don't worry. As dark as it can get, the show never gets sluggish. There's a lot of action sequences and gunfights and shootouts. My favorite episode is episode 7, titled Moving Target, involving Commissioner Gordon having to stay in a protected safe house. Without spilling spoilers, let's just say that it's a very eventful, exciting episode to watch. Not all of them are that way, of course, but each episode is so riveting and compelling and so well thought out in the ways in which they peel off the layers. Now, I'm sure you know by now that the penguin on this show is a woman, and Harley Quinn is Asian American. 
And a lot of racists and purists out there would be triggered by that, crying, DEI hire, DEI hire, woke, woke, woke. But you haven't seen the episodes, whereas I have seen them. And so if you have seen the episodes as well, like I did, then you might be more receptive to it because one, it's an interesting take. And two, the race swapping or the gender swapping actually makes sense to the storyline at hand. And three, it's nice to see something unexpected and new once in a while, right? Jamie Chung voicing Harley Quinn obviously doesn't have that Brooklyn accent, but her version of the character is a lot more determined and a lot more pathological, which makes her even more scary and more intimidating. So the character designs look different, and why they do what they do makes them even more ruthless and vengeful and formidable. Now, you and I agree that the late, great Kevin Conroy is the ultimate voice of Bruce Wayne slash Batman. So nobody can top that. To this day, that is still the Mount Everest. And Hamish Linklater is not trying to copy that in any shape or form. He still gives it that duality, you know, differentiating between how Bruce Wayne sounds versus how Batman sounds when they speak. But he's not trying to emulate or imitate Conroy at all. Hamish is just doing his own thing. Maybe not as forcefully raspy as Christian Bale in the live action movies, but what Hamish does here totally works without it being too distracting or over the top. It's just the right level of voice tone for the kind of Bruce Wayne slash Batman that's being presented here. By the way, eight-year-old Bruce Wayne deciding that all Gotham criminals must pay for the murder of his parents is oddly disturbing. And that is a testament to this show's willingness to see how far they can push some of these iconic characters. Ooh, and lastly, I'm sure you're wondering, and the answer is no. The Joker did not show up in this first season. But there's a cliffhanger teaser at the end for his possible eventual appearance, meaning they're saving that whole story arc for season two, which I hope will happen. I mean, this show is so damn good. It's such a bloody great show. It would be inconceivable if they're not going to continue it beyond this. So yeah, overall I give Batman Cape Crusader the rating of 5 out of 5. Visually arresting, well-performed, well-directed, impeccably put together, and it'll grab hold of you from the start and doesn't let go. This is a monumental animated storytelling achievement. 